I'm Alex Cheprev and welcome to Crashing Maya. Hey guys, uh, in this video I want to cover um, a technique I use to, um, for architectural modeling or uh, hard surface prop modeling and uh, it's pretty simple. Let me get started. So I like to start with a plane, uh, just a simple square plane, no divisions, and I add a Lambert and then I add an image, uh, just a file texture. I have an image prepared here. And it just looks like this. Uh, just a building image. So I'm going to go into the uh, top view, turn off the grid. And what I want to do is I want to start outlining uh, the perspective layout of this image. And it's going to be pretty simple. So I'm going to select this. I like to frame it so I can see most of it or all of it and uh, take up the most screen space I'm going to use the poly cut tool and find a line here drag and end up there almost perfect a little higher like that that looks exactly the same. Okay, that's good enough. And then, uh, now I'm going to use the multi cut tool and I'm going to follow this line here like that. Then I can zoom out, click this edge, zoom in, and then use the middle mouse button and then right click to finish. And then the same on this side. Click here, then here. And then we want to. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow this curb line there, and then this is going to go from here down there. Now we don't really know exactly uh, where it's supposed to go in the bottom because we have this stupid pole in the way, so we'll have to just estimate. Okay, that's good enough. Select that, invert selection and delete. So you should have this remaining. If we look at our UV view, this is what it looks like. All right, so now uh, the fun part, I'm gonna, uh, gonna do it this way. I'm gonna select uh, the plane here. I'm gonna hold D and V and move the pivot to one of the corners, snap it to grid. I'm just going to rotate it up. This way it's, uh, you know, straight up. It's easier to work with. Uh, like that. And then I'm going to use, uh, you can use the grid or you can snap to the vertices. So I'm going to select this vertex, hold V, pre-select this arrow, and snap there. Snap there. That way and that way. And now we have this image here and it's all distorted. Uh, but that's just a display bug in Maya. So I'm going to start adding some lines uh, where the features are in this image. And this will help straighten the image and also help us define some of these features. Like that. Okay, and I'm going to drop a line in the middle here. And what I want to do also is I want to use one of these as a kind of a guide for the rest. So I'm going to drop a line here and then if I drop a line here and here, I should be able to get um, the scale of these features correctly. Alright, so now we'll add lines. Well, first thing, see how these lines don't match? Uh, that's an easy fix. I'm going to use the uh, multi-cut tool here. Oops. Click there. And now 
drag this. Um, the reason this will happen is because of lens distortion. It's not a big deal. Control delete. And then select these vertices. And snap. You want to, if you hold control shift and right click, you want to make sure you're in the world space and keep spacing is off. That way it will snap. Otherwise it won't. All right, let's see if we can define some more. Actually, that's pretty good. And that's good too. All right, so let's do the, put a line here, do one there. And you can see the more lines you add, it starts to straighten out. Now, where the lines go doesn't really matter too much uh, in this direction. Uh, only in the horizontal in this case because we're gonna try and uh, make this nice and even and I'm gonna clear history as I go I'm gonna make a cube if you have measurements great if not then you just have to uh, eyeball it I wanna scale this to how wide I think this window is this will be our guide for the rest of the building like that I want to put this here, snap it there. So basically what I'm doing is I put a line through the middle of this point and this point. So that means whatever is in the middle has to be even. So then I'm going to use the insert edge loop tool, set it to multiple to two, drop two lines there, and I'm going to scale this out like that. Probably something like this. So now, if I snap this one there and that one there, these both sides are now e even. And that's what I wanted. So I can use this as a guide now. And Shift D, Shift D, Shift D. So this will go there. Okay, so we need to duplicate this. No, we don't. We're going to duplicate this because all I need is the distance from this edge to there. So that means that these vertices just need to snap there. Now, in here, I'm going to go back and add the lines where they are in the texture, in the image. So now all the features are pretty exact. We can delete that. So all of the uh, lines here are exactly the same. The windows are the same size. We still see some warp uh, warp going on. That's it's easy to fix. I'm just gonna set this to two, and you just drop lines. Uh, as soon as you have enough lines, the warping will disappear. So do some uh, trial and error, and you should see if you have to, if you have too many, it doesn't matter. It's okay. Okay, so now let's clear history and uh, this is nice and clean. Now, if we look at our UVs, this is what they look like. And this is exactly what we wanted. You can see the lines uh, match the uh, architecture. But I don't like to, I want to actually use this so I can, uh, as a texture. I want to be able to change the texture. So I'm going to just make a new plane. Like that. 
I'm gonna snap the vertices like this. There. So that's my new plane. I'm going to select both, modify freeze, reset, oops. Move my mind. And control D. I'm gonna name our uh, distorted plane uh, source and uh, the new plane as target. I, I name it just so it's, it's some sanity for me uh, because the next step requires you to have a source and a target. You can actually hide the source, you don't need to see it. It'll, this will still work even when it's hidden. And now I'm going to hold spacebar, go to lighting shading, click transfer maps. And here I'm going to just clear all the settings. So clear, clear, remove map, uh, and we'll set the sampling quality to low. Uh, it does the sampling quality doesn't do too much, but it does make a slight difference. But it increases the r rendering time quite a lot. So now I'm going to select the source. Go to the source uh, section. Click Add Selected. Select Target. Add Selected to the targets. I'm going to click uh, Diffuse. And I'm going to set this to uh, TIFF and then click the folder icon. Uh, set this to TIFF again for some reason. And then give it a name. Call it this. Yep. And that's the one I made previously. Um, and now all we have to do is click bake. Uh, it's going to take a little while. I'm going to pause and come back when it's done. Okay, I'm back, and uh, here's our big texture. And uh, if we uh, look at the RUVs, you can see what it looks like. So, using this method, you can uh, straighten out textures that would be hard to do in uh, Photoshop or any other package. So, you can see here are the two uh, planes. And this is the one on the left that we straightened out. It only took 10 minutes. And this is the one on the right. So it's much quicker than doing it in Photoshop. And uh, the only limitation is that uh, you're limited to 4K. And that's a mild limitation. I'm not sure why they should allow 4K uh, transfers. But uh, I think this is a pretty good way to do it. And uh, if you have any comments or questions, uh, let me know below and subscribe and like. Thank you for watching.